Texturing can make or break your art assets. Aesthetically, at least. We love texturing, and what we love more is PBS texturing. PBS stands for Physically Based Shading. It's a technique used to create and apply materials that are photorealistic. If the concept of PBS and PBR are new to you, I left some links down below in the description for you to check out. Today, at Fused VR, we decided to share with you how we create PBS textures to be used in game and transform VR. I'm Abdo, aka Coaster, and this is PBS Texturing for VR. The first thing I like to do before I start texturing is open the model inside Blender and check out the UV maps. Now I did create the model so I know how the UV maps are done but I just wanted to show you. If I apply a UV grid on the mesh you can see how it's uniformly spread throughout the model both the bow and the arrow and it's looking very well for us. You want to make sure no stretching is happening throughout the UV map of the model so that the texturing looks exactly as you want it to look. Now we have a material applied to both the arrow and the bow with the same material name, bow and arrow. And this material is going to be used later on inside Substance Painter. So we jump into Substance Painter, which is our tool of choice for texturing. We click File, New, and this menu pops up with options, giving us choice of starting template. There are a few selections. The default template is PBR Metallic Roughness, and you have the choice of doing non-PBR, but we're going for PBR for this one. Basically, there are two workflows, PBR Metallic Roughness and PBR Specular Glossiness. The choice is yours depending on your target engine. There are links in the description to learn more about these two workflows. Unity 5 and Unreal Engine 4 templates are also available, but it's not too important to choose now since you can change the template in the expert settings later. The Mesh Select option is where we select our starting mesh to texture. Then, below that, depending on your choice of template, the normal map format will toggle between DirectX and OpenGL. We also have the choice to select any starting maps, such as baked normal maps to include in our project as well. Once we hit OK, the base mesh gets loaded, with the 3D view on the left and the associated UV map on the right. The UI is pretty straightforward. At the bottom there is a shelf, which is where all the PBS materials are stored. Substance Painter comes loaded with a set. You can use any of those to immediately start texturing. To apply a material, just drag it drop to the layers, and it will get applied with the projection method automatically set to UV projection. We can preview other materials by just clicking on one of them, and then it will instantly show the preview of it applied to the mesh. Some of these materials look very advanced with scratches and grunge applied already. On the texture set panel, there is one entry, the name of our material, that was applied to the meshes as was named in Blender. We can quickly rename this material if we want. Let's add in a mat at the end. The properties panel is where we control the brush settings. Substance Painter allows for light painting on the models, hence the name. Of course, you can choose a brush color and paint away. To get started, I always like to bake textures. By default, I would have a high poly mesh that I want to bake details from to a low poly version of it. In this case, I only have this version, but I would bake textures anyway. Reasons for that, it would bake an curvature and an ambient occlusion map, which will come in handy a little later. We have the choice to select the resolution for the resulting maps, as well as padding size. Loading the high poly mesh in this section, otherwise we check this box to use the same mesh for baking. From this drop down menu, I sometimes like to select the mesh by mesh name for matching. This ensures the normal maps get projected for each separate object correctly. And check an ID from baked maps in this case because we don't need it and we don't have any vertex colors applied. Hidden bake, it could take a while depending on the mesh and the map sizes. Down here, watch how these slots get filled with new maps once it's done. You may not notice a big change, but the ambient occlusions map was definitely applied here and we can see it in the corners and edges. Now we're ready to apply some materials. First up, wood. Type in the word in the shell fields some entries. I can go with this one, drag and drop. To make it more interesting, let's mask out a few areas of the bow to texture differently. Right click on the material layer and add black mask. Of course, that's going to hide all the material. With this button here called Polygon Fill, we click it to get the option to unmask areas based on polygons. 
I'll click this little icon here to choose to mask my UV islands. Then I click the areas where I want the wood material to show. I can choose the areas from the 2D view as well if I want to. Moving on to the metallic parts. Just type in metal in the search bar and we have quite a few options to choose from. Anyone I pick I can always drag and drop to apply. Of course it will apply it in the entire mesh. We can always choose to mask the material to only certain areas like before. We can always drop the resolution down and it's lossless. We can always raise it up and down based on our needs. I'll go with a metal that's a little polished because I want to show you how we can add wear and tear to the materials very easily. This bow must have been used so we want to add some dirt on top. To do that I can add a fill layer and give it some dark red or brown color. Then I'm gonna mask this layer out and this is where the genius of Substance Painter with its smart masks comes in. I can add a generator and then select dirt mask generator. Of course the dirt layer has to be all the way up on the top. There it is. It's made a huge difference already. The dirt layer is being masked out in all the mesh except in corners and edges. The way this mask generator detects edges is thanks to the ambient occlusion and curvature maps that we baked before. Up in the resolution is just going to show us even more stunning details. The details are appearing in all the right places in the areas where the bow might have been used too much that it got discolored. It's very believable and it shows exactly the kind of beat down and used look I was going for. There are plenty of parameters we can change in this mask generator. Adjusting contrast for example and levels is going to show a different level of details. Moving on, I'll hide the dirt layer and I want to add some grunge and scratches to the metallic parts. To do so, I'll put in the material in a group and copy the same mask to the group folder. Then, add in a fill layer and from the properties panel, disable the color height and normal. You should disable the metallic map as well, but in some cases it does output some interesting results. So we can try it out with it on. I'll add some dripping rust generator on top. I don't really like the results in this case, so I'll turn it off for now. I'll select the mask again and add in a fill on it. Then we can load in a grayscale grunge image to manipulate the roughness as we intended. And that's how we get the wear and tear effect. If the seams are in the way, like in this case, we can always blend them together with a few brush strokes. The mask is being controlled by the grunge map itself, so I'll duplicate the layer and reset the mask select a grunge or dirt brush and add in the brush strokes to hide in the seam lines. The last material to add is some fabric for the string. Same as before, search, select and drag and drop and then mask out. For the final step, we want to export our material texture maps to be used in the game engine. Go to file, export textures, a familiar menu pops up. With the same templates as shown in the beginning, we can choose the export template or set our own. An extra option to choose how the padding in the texture maps will take place. I always like to go with dilation plus padding with default background color with 8 pixels of padding. The options are available for both engines but I have set up a template for Unity VR which is based on the default template for Unity 5 with a simple tweak to make it VR ready. To make a template, I'll duplicate the one for Unity 5. I can rename it to whatever I want. You can just add a height map by clicking on the RGB button and add that as an RGB base map. Then from this menu, I'll drag the height map and drop it in the new slot. I'll select from height map, add gray channel. That's it. VR textures do need height map for the most part to show the depth correctly. I can set up the name using the parameters which will take the proper name later. Going back to export, I can preview all the maps that will be exported using the newly created template. Head export and you get your PNG textures which are ready to be used in the target engine. That would be all for this tutorial. There is definitely a lot more to cover about PBS texture and for VR. And I wanted to show you a quick way to dip your toes in Substance Painter and begin creating awesome textures. By the way, if you want to use the bow, I've already shown the process on how to model and UV map it. Videos are linked below. As always, likes if you enjoyed it, subs if you loved it, and comment your feedback. Thanks for watching. It's been Abdo, over and out.